other stuff that We're going to call a planning and zoning meeting of February 8th to order. Roll call. Chairman Vincent. Mr. Carr. Here. Mr. Parker. Here. Mr. Giliosis. Here. Ms. St. Arnold. Here. Mr. Seaman. Mr. Haas. Ms. Protos. Second item is election of officers. We had talked last month about deferring this to this month because of uh, the chairman wasn't able to make it. I think if we can we defer it another month, is that you can certainly you can certainly defer it another month if you'd like, being that there's just barely a quorum here. If you want to try to take it up when there's a more full board, we can do that. I think we'll it's a better it idea here. to wait. We'll put it on your agenda board. for the March meeting. Do we need a, a motion on that or just we're okay in agreement with everybody? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. We don't need a motion. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move to the quasi-judicial announcement by our attorney. There are two agenda items. The first one, application of Number 15-109, Amendment to Mears Crossing Special Area Plan. That is a legislative item and will not be held for a quasi-judicial proceeding. However, application number 15-76, Site Plan Review for Mears Town Center, is a quasi-judicial procedure and these rules will apply. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the board acts in quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. As a, as a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the code of ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. 
If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. Has, any, has anyone had any, uh, excuse me, is, are there any witnesses that are here to testify either for or against the application today? Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, Zach. Oh, with the legislative application first. You're talking about uh, 15? Dash 109 amendment to yes. crossing special airplane. That's a legislative application. I'm going to introduce the staff that we have here since okay. some of you guys know Dave, but not everybody does. Dave is actually, Dave Haley is going to actually give the staff report. The um, Our consultant has worked feverishly to work on this project um, simply because the staff that you have here are all new. They weren't around when these project when this project came forward previously. So as that, we wanted to have the expertise that we do have on staff here at the city um, provide the analysis, and I can answer any questions that you may have related to the codes and that type of thing. But Dave has a better grasp of what has happened with the history of this project, and also he has been on and working on this project even before I got here um, as far as the request for the second application tonight. So with that, I'll kind of give Dave the floor here. Thanks, Heather. I think I'll go up here if it's okay. I can see the whole board that way and, and uh, look through a couple of the slides that we have if that works for everybody. Sounds good. Heather, thanks. My name is Dave Healy with Calvin Giordano and Associates, uh, working with Heather and the staff to uh, provide the staff backup and information for the Planning and Zoning Board for the two items tonight. Um, Heather's um, recitation reminded me my main qualification is that I'm old and I've been around a long time, so <laughs> <clears throat> for whatever that's worth. Um, as the attorney pointed out, there's two separate items, but they are very much interconnected. In fact, the second is dependent on the first. Uh, the first is an amendment of the special area plan, which is the plan designation for planned redevelopment mixed use that was applied to this 17-acre property in 2008. There were two ordinances approved in 2008, Ordinance 2008-18 and Ordinance 2019, that amended the plan to the planned redevelopment mixed use designation under the land use plan and the SAP, the special area plan zoning that was put in place. And the diagram here on the, on the uh, screen shows you the concept plan that was approved underneath the SAP or the Special Area Plan designation. Mm -hmm. And some of you are familiar with the site, I'm sure. It's been partially developed with the Winn-Dixie Supermarket and some of the retail uh, buildings to the north of it. But the majority of the property has not. And the request tonight to amend the Special Area Plan is to address specifically uh, the residential component that was approved underneath the original plan, that's the two larger, lighter shaded buildings, kind of the two U-shaped buildings. I'll just point to them here. In this location, it represented the residential portion of the project as it was originally approved in 2008. As the staff report points out, it's not unusual with the amount of time that's elapsed, some seven or more years that the market's changed, the conditions have changed, and the applicant now is requesting the amendment of the special area plan to do something slightly different, but still residential in nature with an apartment complex. It outlines in the staff report that originally there were approved 362 residential dwelling units, 242 apartments, and some 120 senior living facilities in addition to the uh, square footage approved for the, for the retail part of the project. The request is to amend the special area plan for the 10.9 acres that remain to be developed to address the residential portion of it and in two f phases,
Okay. Uh, I went too far to me. There are, there are actually two phases proposed in the amendment of the plan. This is the first of the next phase, and it shows immediately south of the Winn-Dixie building the five apartment complex buildings. That's specifically what's proposed, and the details of that are included in your next item, the site plan. But in order to show the remainder of the site, they've also shown in the green shaded areas the remaining parcels to be developed in a subsequent phase, and at least an interim stormwater facility that will accommodate this, the drainage for the site in the interim, and poten potentially long term, <laughs> well, let's see if I can go back. There we go. Potentially long term, in fact, to be used if alternative accommodations can be made for the stormwater to be developed with some of the office and uh, research complex that was proposed originally as part of the special area plan. What I've done on page two of the staff report, I think it's important for the planning board to understand exactly what's changed. And I've tried to enumerate both what's stayed the same and what's changed so that you can have a firm understanding of that and ask questions about it. Um, the proposed 236 unit multifamily residential project is consistent with the type and scale of what was proposed originally, slightly smaller, slightly fewer units by six than originally proposed. The entry roadway from US Alternate 19 and the traffic circle and the main north-south road that runs from Mears and connects with the hospital site remains as it was originally designed. Uh, so those were important components and considerations in that original plan. One of the key ones was to make sure this site connected to the hospital site for interconnectivity. Some of the things that have changed are that the apartment complex includes all of the property um, south of the Winn-Dixie site, whereas previously it was divided up where the apartments were congregated more uh, in, in a portion of the site, and the very north portion of the site was for office and potentially senior housing, although that was never really defined in terms of what that meant. It was also a condition of the original approval that the 60 percent of the buildings face that north-south main street. That, frankly, isn't practical in the design that they've come forward with. The one building, you see, um, I'll point to it. Obviously, because the buildings have been broken into smaller individual buildings, it's not possible for all of them to be on the main street, and, and we don't think that's a major deviation from the original concept. Um, the proposed amendment to the special area plan retains all of the entitlements, even though it may not be practical and they may not achieve all of that building area for the office and and research and other complex was originally proposed because of the interim stormwater facility. So that remains to be seen, but all of the entitlements remain. If they're able to achieve those on the remainder of the site, the full complement of office space, um, that would be desirable, and that would ultimately come back to you as an additional site plan review item were that to be proposed. On balance, what staff has said very simply is that on the whole, we think it's consistent with the original concept. Yes, there have been adaptations and revisions. Uh, it's being done in two subsequent phases, and that, again, is probably realistic given the reality of the marketplace and the fact that the current applicant uh, is a residential developer, and he likely may or may not develop the rest of the, of the complex. What we've done to try and explain all of the, the details that are important to you is attach a series of things. We've attached, in particular, Ordinance 2016-01, and that would be the ordinance that ultimately goes to the City Commission to formally amend those two previous ordinances that were approved in 2008. So to, this would amend 2008, 18, and 19, and one of the things that we did with, at staff and with the assistance of legal counsel was to lay out 
I, I know it's kind of boring all the whereas clauses, but it really does give you a sense of the chronology, what's happened and why. And in particular, that's important in understanding the conditions that we've attached to the recommendation for approval. Because there were some things that were attached as original conditions that remain to be met and are very critical uh, to the approval of the project. Uh, there are in the ordinance then um, four attachments. The first is the legal description. The second is a special area plan as originally adopted, the first slide we showed. Exhibit three shows you the um, slides two and three that show the second and third phases of what's proposed. And lastly, ex exhibit four, a letter confirming compliance with resolution 2852. That was the resolution approved by the city council, city commission, that required Mears Boulevard to be extended as a condition of this project going forward. And we are maintaining that as an explicit condition of our recommendation here. So in short, our recommendation is to approve the amendment to the special area plan uh, per the attached uh, illustrations with four conditions. The first is that ultimately this, the site plan that accompanies this get approved as it is proposed. Secondly, that Mears Boulevard in fact be constructed and approved prior to any certificate of occupancy for these residential units. That was a key part and frankly it's one of the reasons this was delayed as long as it has been from its initial inception. The city manager and staff are very clear this goes nowhere until there's agreement that Mears Boulevard gets extended. <clears throat> Thirdly, uh, the satisfaction of a condition that was in a settlement agreement under the terms of the original ordinance. The state of Florida contested that ordinance back in 2008 and had to do with development in the coastal high hazard area and evacuation and shelter space. Condition number three relates to sp the specific wording in that settlement agreement that was approved by the state and the city, and we need to be sure that that's met, and that is that there be a study conducted and funded by the applicant relative to the potential ability for the First United Methodist Church to serve as a shelter. We know we can't guarantee the church would agree, but we need to know whether it's potentially available in terms of the hardening that would need to occur. And then lastly, the approval of all the site plan and permitting requirements for the multifamily portion that you'll deal with in the site plan itself. So I want to make sure we separate clearly the, the two separate items. Those are the conditions that attach to the special area plan. There are additional and, and more specific conditions that we'll deal with when we talk about the site plan. Any questions of me? And then I'll, I'm sure the applicant may want to be heard. And, I can come back if there are. Okay, thank you. Hear from the applicant. Good evening, uh, my name is J.D. al Sabah. I'm with Sycamore Engineering, um, 8370 West Hillsborough Avenue, Suite 205, Tampa, Florida, 33615. And of course, I already sworn. Um, just, uh, uh, of course, um, we have been as aware of the project have been for eight years now in different phases. And uh, what we try to do in the last probably a year or so to work closely with the staff to bring it to life. And that's what we, you know, after a few attempt, it happened in the last four or five years from the developer to bring it in different use as medical office, as, you know, ALF, as, as major use, of course could not work due to the market. So now we try to get as apartment with the face we try to do. And with help of the staff, in the last few months, I think we get, you know, we achieve what we need to do. And we are close, of course, to complete it. Uh, nothing to add, condition, I went through it completely and the client went through and we almost, we had ag full agreement on everything there before. So nothing to add except if you guys have any question for me on this regard. Any questions? 
Nothing? Approve? Not All yet. right. <laughs> See you later. Um, do we have any public comment on this application? Okay. We have board comments right now. Any other questions for staff of changing? Okay. We could open for a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept application number 15-109, Amendment to Mears Crossing Special Area Plan as it stands with the conditions. Do we need, just referred to the conditions that are listed by staff? We don't need to clarify those, right? Okay. I second it. Okay. Roll call. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Juliosis? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on. Oh. Was Mr. Parker the second? Yes, he was. Thank you. Move on to the fifth item. Now, application number 15-76, site plan review for Mears Town Center. As you read the staff report, you'll see a lot of the same information repeated because we're obviously talking about essentially the same property. Um, a few of the specifics to point out are, are a little more in detail. Uh, we are talking now specifically about the 10.9 acres that are not yet developed. 6.5 of those of which are to be occupied by the apartment complex, the other four would remain to be developed in the subsequent phase and require a separate site plan. Some of the specifics um, for the site plan are that, first of all, the, the charge for staff is to find it consistent with a comprehensive plan. Well, to the extent that you've just amended the comprehensive plan with the approval of the special area plan, it will now, in fact, be consistent. Um, they have addressed the concurrency management requirements in the application. We've compared those to some of the um, original um, documentation and data in, in the 2008 traffic study, for example, and they are consistent with that because there are, in fact, fewer residential units built on a larger area. Uh, there's, in fact, less traffic to be generated than was proposed under the original uh, proposal. Um, it will be consistent with the zoning requirements to the extent that you approve the specifics of this special area plan. You do have in the backup of the staff the comments reviewed by the Technical Review Committee. The density on the um, total 17 acres of this residential component is about 14 units an acre, not excessive at all. On the six and a half units an acre itself, it'll be about 36 units an acre, but as compared to overall and what was originally approved in the special area plan, it's consistent with that. There are five buildings. Um, the first Closest to the Winn-Dixie is a, a four-story building, slightly different configuration than the other four. The other four are three stories. One of those three-story buildings, the one we brought closest to the street, is two stories over parking, parking underneath this, which allows them to bring it forward. The other three buildings that are three stories deep. Can you repeat that one more time in the microphone so the people watching online sure. and I'm sorry. at home I think they've numbered them. Building one is closest to Winn-Dixie, is four stories. Building two, that building closest to the street, is three stories, two stories of two living levels over parking. The other three buildings behind it and to the south of it are three stories from at above grade. Okay. The parking, um, we went through several different exercises with the applicant. Um, the actual computed parking requirements of 404 spaces. Um, I'm sorry, let me, let me correct that. The, the number we would start with would be 442 required spaces based on the number of units, based on the rec facility and the pool, some 442 they have an automatic entitlement to a 10% reduction per
per the code, section 127.05 of the code, allows them to reduce the required parking by 10% given its proximity and immediate adjacency to the Pinellas Trail. And they've taken advantage of part of that entitlement. Um, it actually works out to a little less than the 10% that uh, they would be entitled to. So the parking um, is in accord with the code and doesn't require any further uh, provision. They are also providing at our suggestion uh, some bicycle racks, four bicycle racks that will be, we hope, heavily used for the, the tenants in the apartment uh, complex uh, with the adjacency to the trail. Um, there are two out parcels, as we talked about. I'll go back to that, not quite so far. I guess there are the two out parcels you see that would remain uh, subject to separate site plan approval, um, as well as the uh, stormwater um, retention facility that will be there at least uh, during this phase of the project. We are recommending approval in that it is consistent with a comprehensive plan and your land development code, subject to a number of specific conditions. Uh, there are 13 of them. I won't read them all to you, but they are all important. Uh, the first three are, are kind of typical, that they obviously uh, get the requisite permit for tree removal, for uh, construction plans approved consistent with the site plan, and uh, the site plan, uh, the construction permits be obtained within one year of site plan approval. The two or three that I would call your special attention to that I think are key to our recommendation are that the extension of Mears Boulevard be completed consistent with that original resolution prior to the first certificate of occupancy. Um, that the amendment of the special area plan um, that is consistent with the site plan be adopted by the by the City Commission, obviously, your recommendation on the site plan will be attached to and joined at the hip with your recommendation on the special area plan. Um, the off-site roadway connection to the hospital, that was a main feature of the original special area plan. They have continued to show that. It's my understanding that, in fact, some of the parking on the hospital site is being rearranged to accommodate that connection, and uh, that connection is uh, provided for in this site plan and is an important condition. We've asked that they coordinate the connection to the Pinellas Trail. I'll point to that and then come back. Would there be a connection here towards Mears and there's another connection here midpoint in the apartment park, uh, complex that's detailed on the site plan itself. But we've asked that I know it doesn't help when I keep walking away from the mic. Uh, we've asked that, that the actual design of that, its elevation, its uh, uh, the, the point at which it connects with the trail in particular be done in coordination with Pinellas County and their trail folks so that it can be integrated with the trail. And there's been a lot of attention um, as the trail has gained in popularity about how you make that connection rather than an absolute straight T where people kind of dive out into the trail with people moving by to flare it. So there's a literally an access uh, Y and a decel Y, if you will, to get it on and off the trail. So a detail, but that would be important to attend to later on. Um, obviously, the design of the water system meets the needs and the fire flow is approved ultimately by the city uh, folks here. That was a condition uh, TRC. A final plat, there are actually four different parcels here, the road plat, the two out parcels, and the retention pond that subsequently need to be platted and accounted for in terms of who's going to construct that and maintain that uh, over the years as the apartment complex presumably will be separated uh, from the property. Very important condition number 10, and Brian Anderson is here uh, who reviewed the stormwater management plan. There's an extensive three-page memo that's attached uh, to your staff report that outlines those comments, things that need to be attended to and the details that need to be clarified uh, prior to permits being issued. And it deals with the swift mud permit that may or may not already be in place, uh, Florida environmental uh, protection permits that are required. All of those things need to be uh, reviewed and assured that they're in place before the project goes forward. 
Uh, Brian can probably answer additional technical details on that, uh, but we want to be sure that we understand exactly how that stormwater drainage system is going to operate both in the interim and long term. I referenced earlier the, the study to uh, fund the hardening of the, the church for potential shelter purposes. And we've probably redundant number 12 and 13 refer again to the swift mud and uh, FDEP wetland mitigation permits to make sure they're in order before the project goes forward. So we've tried to recognize that at this stage, all of the details, engineering details, aren't in place and don't need to be in order to approve the site plan as it's laid out, but to provide assurance that they, in the interim, before construction goes forward, that they are in place. And uh, we think we've covered those points. So I'll be glad to answer any questions on the, on the conditions or any other aspect of the site plan that you have. Any questions for staff? Got a couple questions. Um, so, if the applicant doesn't pass the swift mud permitting, does that mean the application it's not going to go forward? Then, right? Yeah, I'll let the I'll, I'll let the applicant speak. Sure, to I'll that hold off. Then I'll I think that's that. in process, but uh, he's probably got details on that that I don't have. So. Okay, sure. Um, have we, as the city, pushed for any signage for um, the road? direction to take people towards the uh, Mears Boulevard, towards the light at all. Um, my only concern is I know it's a safety concern leaving any part of Ultra 19. You're coming off a hill as you're going north towards this project, mm -hmm. um, and people go rather fast right there. And then there are also, there's a, I believe a gas station right before it, and then there's also the, an exit and entrance into the Winn-Dixie right after this as you're heading north. And then there's also a another neighborhood across the street that unloads an Ultra 19 too. So the 200 and something units of vehicles that, that are going to be coming out of this complex, I think there could be a, a risk there. So have we as a city asked the applicant to put adequate signage to pointing towards mirrors um, so people know that there is a light signal up there that they could get out on? Uh, I'm not sure if that's been addressed or what was talked about in that situation. Yeah, I can make sure I understand. You mean internal to the project to direct the apartment tenants to mirrors as opposed to alternate 19? Well, you have other, I mean, if you have commercial buildings that are potentially going to be in there, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. So if someone that comes in from the hospital, someone that's maybe in the Winn-Dixie that comes over, um, <clears throat> obviously the answer is probably no on that one. So I'm well, just... Uh, uh, yeah, and in time, I mean, certainly the, there's the existing town center sign at the entrance on mirrors to the retail complex, and the truth is human nature is going to direct them to where yeah. they want to go. If they're going cool. east, they're going to go up to mirrors and, and go east. Uh, if they're going north, um, it would probably make sense to come out on mirrors and go to the light to be able to turn. Um, but if they're going south, I'm not sure that uh, we're going to persuade them with any internal signage to go around uh, the most obvious uh, point of connection. Okay, I'm just, obviously there's a lot of elderly people that live in our community, so I'm just, sure. I want to make sure. But then the, uh, Mears is also going to become a, a highway area it, once it's connected too, so it's going to be a, a, just the same hazard over there too. So, yeah. And I think there are, uh, Heather live. can expand on this, I'm not familiar with the details, but I think there are long-term plans to add a turn lane there at alternate 19 uh, northbound on Mears. Yeah, FDOT has already committed, and it's actually in the design phase um, to add a right-hand turn lane a at the Mears intersection, and it actually will end up being operational before the road is connected through to US 19. Um, and when that happens, the alignment for the Me the current Mears intersection will be slightly um, changed um, from where it is now to allow for a better flow of traffic through that intersection. That that turn lane will provide for probably more reliever traffic going up onto um, onto Mears rather than in circling through the the plaza. With the exception of the residents, where they're going to probably go through that roundabout portion um, to come into that project going north, um, southbound. 
I do haven't looked at the design to see if it's actually if they're going to um, divide the highway there or not to see if there's going to be any um, barrier or that type of thing. That's something that we're going to want to um, obviously look at and watch when we get into that design with FDOT to make sure that that doesn't happen because if that happens, while it directs traffic, it also restricts traffic. So those are the type of things that we will look at. As far as the signage that's internal to the project, that's something that we can add as a condition if that's the wishes of the board um, to provide for additional signage internal to the project directing folks to the signalized intersection on Mears. I recently was up in Tallahassee at a Walmart and I saw those signs and they're very helpful when you're, when you're new to an area or you don't know the area. It's not an overly burdened suggestion to ask the applicant to do that. We can get the applicant's opinion on whether they'd be receptive to doing something like that, but it's not a bad um, additional directional signage is allowed, and it's not a bad idea for a project of this size um, to do that because you will certainly have fo elderly folks probably living in at least one of these buildings because there will, it will be in a building with an elevator. So that being the case, that becomes attractive to folks who are older or folks who have mobility issues. Um, so that being the case, you providing for any additional signage may help clarify, you know, to send people out to mirrors. But that would be at the wishes of this board to forward that along to the Board of Commissioners if you wish. Okay. Other thoughts or questions of me at this time? I don't have any additional questions. Okay. Again, J.D. al Sycamore Engineering. Um, the first, just let me uh, make comment on the um, access. In 2006, when we started the project, there is comprehensive uh, study to the traffic in the whole project. The same happened with the accesses. So all the traffic flow we created on the project was a study exclusively, and we keep the same until now. I know we changed the building, you see different building, the user chain, but still the same. And these are study and coordinated with, FD, with the city staff, mm -hmm. with the DOT, with the county, with everybody. So uh, as far as, which is a good point, as far as the signage, I, I, if, if you look closely to the construction plan, you see the yield sign around that, you know, uh, around, 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 a, a, a stop sign, which is in one part answer some of your question as far as the safety, the other part, the direction towards the traffic study, the traffic um, signal, which is usually when somebody lives there, he aware with the pass to that. I mean, we don't mind to add any sign, but the idea he we wanted to be sure just, you know, uh, uh, he knew how we get to the, uh, to that, to the, to the traffic signal, especially as you see the major corridor going across the whole property, like the main channel from the south to the north to Maris Boulevard, which is open completely between the commercial and residential. So as far as um, you know, um, the, 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 the traffic flew and smoothly to be with some you know, senior live in the, in the, in the project, I, I don't think it will be a problem. But we don't mind to look into it closely if we need to. The other part is the uh, swift mud, I mean, you know, thanks for clarification that we need swift mud permit. It's swift mud required for any project. That's not, you know, required for any time. This project already approved by swift mud, approved by DOT, drainage and access. So, however, it's expired because everything, you know, went away, you know, a few years ago. So, of course, we're going to get that. And as you knew, the county, or the city, I'm sorry, you could not pull building plan until you have all the other agency permit. So it's, you know, it's absolutely that's part of what we, we did it before in the Winn-Dixie, and we did it before the same phase, and we're going to do it again. So, um, and, and, and this project have, you know, might be, we don't want to go deeper as well as, as uh, 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 and I, with my respect to the comment came up, uh, there is depth in, this, in the uh, drainage. The drainage is, is title influence project. It's not affected. It's not connected even to that to that to that DOT system. So we because we create system connect all the way in Maris Boulevard. So um, that's need to be clarification 
in our side, we need to do to whoever, you know, review the plan for us as far as the drainage, and we need to show that that's what we have done and approved before is still valid and, and can work completely. Any other question? Any other board questions? Can you elaborate a little bit more about the bike trail and how that's going to connect? Um, from, do you have that in plan yet, or is that just kind of in design still? Or? Well, it, it's really in the design part. We, we, in the beginning for this phase, we thought about the three connection. And three connection, they are not going to approve it, I mean, to the trail. So therefore, we work, we work closely with the staff, and we have it one connection, as mentioned, which is close to the club. We started the design on that, and we have idea what needed. It's going to be you know, wood bridge connecting between the two sides. And we have some cross-section done. I think partially we did it in the plan. But we're working with another consultant to do that. And that's what we need to also obtain permit from, from uh, uh, um, Metropolitan, I think, uh, from Pinellas yeah, County on that. What about, um, can you address, just clarify a little bit more about the, um, the wetlands? Because now there's the inflow that comes right along, basically where the road is projected to go into off Alter 19. Right. And it's pretty wide, and there's a lot of wetlands on the back side of it between the trail. So um, right. can you just kind of go into that a little bit more detail about how that's going to be mitigated and what, what's going on with that? Right. First of all, the drainage pattern is going to continue the same as before. We have pipe going from the east side, where is the existing wetland, which is east of the trail, going to go all the way across our property, across U.S. Alternate 19, and continue to the north. This is already you know, designed and approved before. So that's one part. As far as drainage pattern, it's going to continue the same as before. As far as the wetland, the wetland already, uh, 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 of course, approved to them, either by the city or by the swift mud on this. You got or Army Corps of Engineers, which you mentioned, you know, that Army Corps. So already approved. The mitigation have to be part of... Uh, you know, off-site work, which is called the Six Mile up in Pasco County, to mitigate that, you know, proposed impact to the wetland. There's coordination done by the city to do part of it in the, in the, in the, in the, um, in the, within the city area, which we've done, and part of it off-site, which, which that's what uh, uh, should be done. Okay. I think I've, if, as far as the wetland, I let uh, 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 Mr. Hoor uh, to, to discuss that. Sure. I know there's a tidal flow that comes up and down that area too, so that's why I was just curious to see that's going to be filled in. And, and a so. Absolutely. We have a modeling which, you know, we have not submitted yet, already done and approved, but we, we did not submit it to whoever review the plan for us, the drainage, which model probably 120 acre watershed, which show the modeling, uh, that, that tidal influence there. And we already started the phase one, and uh, phase two, phase one and two, which is a sweet bay, part of it. And we see how the work, as you see it in the last eight years, working perfectly. So the same apply with this here. And you're gonna, I mean, the study we're gonna, we submit it to the, to the staff. Um, I'm not sure it might be that the, the, the consultant had not received it yet. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Because we submit it, you know, and, and I noticed in the comment that the comment does not show, does not have been received by the consultant in this regard. But we have a study which approved before SwiftMod, and we submitted already to SwiftMod, and we are close to get even SwiftMod permit on that. Okay. Thanks. John, I'm John Hewer with Sycamore Engineering. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a history of the site, um, sometime around the late 30s, early 40s, DOT came through and basically choked off uh, the flow, the natural flow under alternate 19. That wetland system originally was all mangrove, including what was on the other side of the trail, all the way up to the landfill. That all got choked off because salt water couldn't flow in there enough, and eventually all turned into Brazilian pepper, Melaleuca, Brazilian pines, I mean, Australian pines on the Brazilian pepper, and it's become a, what's considered a nuisance wetland. So it's, it's legally a wetland, but the reality of it, the quality of it was extremely low. 
So what was done was twofold. One, permitting by the county, permitting by the water management district, and permitting by the Army Corps of, Eng Corps of Engineers. A one-for-one one acreage was done on the golf course um, around that. That's been done. It's been released by the agencies. And then also that elongated strip that you see along the trail in back of the Winn-Dixie and in back of the apartments, it's basically a stair-step terrace wetland system. And the reason for that stair-step wetland system is to get an additional water quality treatment and have standing pools for the, for the birds and stuff like that. So you've got one for one there and then the remainder of it to meet the state and federal requirements was done off site. Um, and then on top of that, we're also doing the mitigation for the road extension through there. So it's all been tied together. So the city itself didn't lose any acreage of wetlands. You've got back a higher quality than what you had. Okay, thank you. I've got one more question for you too. I know there's, uh, we have a rather popular, or a, a good sized population of homeless and transient um, population amongst our town for whatever reason. Um, have you guys, has the developer, I guess, evaluated maybe like the safety aspect? I'm, I'm assuming there's, being more people around, you tend to be more safe because there's more, there's more eyes. But with the parking garage under the, the buildings, um, I'm assuming there's going to be adequate, adequate lighting that the city's going to require. And um, have you really addressed any of those? Or have you guys considered that or really looked into that well, at all? Well, that's, that's, that's absolutely a good point here. One of the things we, we, of course, the lighting, the lighting there is uh, we submit, of course, photom photo uh, photometric plan to the staff, and there will be lighting to cover the whole area in uh, really, uh, I didn't see less than five uh, foot candle per, per any point on the side. That's one. Two is, um, uh, th yes, they are looking to possibility to include uh, some gate in that, in that parking there. I mean, that's one, I mean, one evaluation, because I know you know the safety issue what came up to the stairs. You know, when in case like this was between the parking, so that's so that one of the things, the detail which you're going through with the architect. In fact, not only for this, for the other building also, looking to be sure that security issue is is important. But I agree with you. I mean, I just get call. I am working on the northwest corner property of Merris and US Alternate 19, and I get the same way call from the sheriff on you know homeless live there, and we give him authorization to, to you know, try to act on uh, you know, behalf of the owner or so in this regard. But I agree that's the that's main, main, main important uh, issue need to be looked into. And then um, with the lighting, is that, have we talked about like the lights being shielded from the road and stuff like that along, the, along those lines? Or is that, I mean, obviously it's not a requirement we have, but is that a discussion that we've had at all? It's a discussion that we've had here at the planning board. Um, I would I would recommend that they use shielded lighting. Right now, your code does not require that. In this particular case, you're not in the same situation that you're in with the other places we've talked about. This was at the water where you have the reflective effect of light refracting off of the water and then you know becoming nuisance light. You don't have that same situation here. I believe the lighting for the Winn-Dixie Plaza would be something similar to what they would be using, although in this case they'd also probably be using lighting off of the buildings. Um, so you could put a condition on there that basically that they use shielded lighting, but right now you don't have any standards for any type of specific lighting fixture that you're working with. It was just basically that we've put in that, the stipulation that they, you know, um, provide for shielded lighting and direct that light internal to um, the, the project. And in this case, that would be um, ideal based on you don't want too much light spillage on US 19 or on um, alternate 19, and especially you don't want it spilling off the site, not necessarily on the trail site, but onto that wetland area, being that there, there is wildlife there. Now, it may not be a premier wetland, but you do have bird life and, and wildlife that do utilize that facility. So... That being the case, you certainly could add a condition if that's a concern of the board, but at this time, staff is not concerned based on the type of lighting that's being used at Winn-Dixie. We'd expect it to be consistent. Correct. Can I, can I comment on that? Sure. Oh, okay. Well, the other point on, if you notice closely, uh, we border with the trail on the east side, and probably, you know, uh, 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 that one part, probably nice light on the building can be more attractive. 
we border the, the face, that face, the apartment face. We border the western side of it with that driveway from the south to the north. That's mostly that, that you know, define the face. And retention pond. And those are green, you see them, the out partial future retail. So those really gonna be, for a period of time, a blank there. We're gonna light, of course, a major road going to 19 there because that's you know main entrance to that to that. So so I believe shielding the light is yes, of course, when we adjust with the residential. But we are the residential. We are the same face on that. And if you notice, let us say that we have uh, the, the the hospital, the hospital to the south. I mean, we have a hedge of, of uh, trees between us and the hospital there. And that part of it which, you know, uh, uh, block any, any you know, uh, uh, privacy between us and, and, and the, the hospital, that one part. The other things, as you notice that the retention pond and that retail, that uh, small triangle is a gas station, which block, block most of the, of the view to 19. So if you get to reality for this phase, we have a small area only facing uh, uh, US Alternate 19, which is mostly the future retail there. But I think, you know, absolutely we need to be cautious as far as uh, glowing for, for lighting, with no doubt about it. No, li lighting's a great safety aspect. I think you, you make a good point. The future developments are gonna be the issues with the Ultra 19 with lighting overall, so. Correct, I, I, my, my suggested opinion, we can do that, but let, it, let him have more light if he yeah. can too. I think it's more the future developments up front that are going to have more of an effect on the, the road and exactly. the driver. So. Exactly. Um, do we have any other questions for the applicant? Do we have any public comment? Okay. I'm not seeing any public comment tonight. Um, we're going to, any other board comments? Okay, we'll open up for a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept application number 15-76, site plan review, review for Mears Town Center as it stands. With the staff recommendations? As it stands, that would include them, yes. Second. Are we have a second? Yes, second. We have one. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Giliosis? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, do we have any staff comments tonight? We don't have any staff comments at this time. Okay. Um, any board comments? No. Yeah, we'd like to ask about uh, our March meeting. You can ask about the March meeting. Do we have anything on the agenda right now? At this particular time, no, but it's still early in the process because this meeting was moved so early in the month. I don't, I'm not gonna have a good handle on what would, what's actually gonna be required because your deadline is still another week away. So at this particular time, we have not had anything go through TRC that I would be expecting to move through to planning board in March. So it is possible that the meeting may be canceled, but I'll be in touch to let you know that once I get to the deadline. Okay. Um, any board comments? All right. I think we have a uh, election coming up, so don't forget to get out and vote sometime in March for whoever you want to vote for. But um, at, what is it, 7.51, the meeting's adjourned. Yeah, any, uh, anybody who does not want a, prov want a copy of their large plans, I'll take those because we'll pass them along to the Board of Commissioners. Perfect. Thank you. That way we can recycle, we can recycle as much as possible. Right.
That's the max. Like I think there's three years and you're really pointed. And I think the longest you could be on is ten years.